All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan battle video. So in less than 12 hours from now, the Dokkan Fest Tech Android 17 and 18 will be dropping on the global side of the game. So in today's video, I want to give you guys all the information you need about this release to hopefully help you decide whether or not you want to spend your hard earned dragon stones to try and pull them or instead save those stones for something else in the future. Now, real quick, before we get into it, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Gamersups. They recently released a few new waifu shakers, like this one, as well as some new flavors like the lychee and new strawberry. So if you guys want to go check those out, then head down to the link in my description. And if you want to buy something, then you can use my discount code TIGER for 10% off your entire purchase. Once again, that's Gamer subs, go check them out. And with that said, let's uh, jump right into it. So obviously, as we always do, before we talk about the banner or the uh, units themselves, the first thing we gotta do is watch their animations. So here we go. I'm gonna just turn up the volume a little bit and enjoy. I think it's time to put him out of his misery, Seventeen. Why are you in such a rush? Let's just try to enjoy ourselves. If we wipe out all of humanity now, then the fun ends and we've got nothing left to do, right? Alright, so those are the animations for both the Tech 17 and 18, as well as the Int to Row and 19, which is the side unit on their banner. And uh, I really like them. Now, the issue is that <laughs> I think everything is going to seem underwhelming um, after you watch the animations for the 7th Anniversary LRs, the uh, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, and the Blue Goku and Blue Vegeta, right? So. Yeah, I'm sure many of you, you know, after watching those, won't really feel like these look that great. But, um, you know, compared to like most Dokkan Fest units, I think they're great animations. They're definitely very clean. And as an Androids fan, I love them. I mean, especially the Android 18 parts. But uh, yeah, those are the animations. Very solid. I wouldn't go as far to say they're like, you know, like some of the best animations in the game or anything like that. They're not like top five to me. But they're good, good animations. So from there, let's jump over to the banner now. And uh, this was the banner on JP when they came out on that side. And as you can see, it was actually quite a uh, good banner. We got the Tech 17 and 18. We got the Int Duro and uh, 19. We have STR Super Vegeta, Int Broly, AGL 13, Int Future. Gohan and also the Fizz Super Saiyan feature Gohan. But unfortunately, on the global side, there will 100% be at least one replacement, and that would be for arguably the most exciting unit on this banner, which is the STR Super Vegeta. Since he literally just came out on global, he will be replaced for. I mean, it's hard to say, but I think the most likely candidate would be the AGL Kid Gohan, who is good. Don't get me wrong, he's very good. It's just, in terms of like how exciting he is compared to the STR Super Vegeta, it's not even close, right? And uh, Gohan's damage is pretty underwhelming. He is one of the better defensive units in the game. His defense is really, really good, but 
yeah, like I said, you know, compared to SDR Super Vegeta, it just feels kind of underwhelming. And, uh, you know, if you look at the banner overall with AGL Gohan instead of SDR Super Vegeta, it's not that good of a Dokkan Fest banner. Now, the androids, amazing. The side unit, 19 and Jiro, very good. Um, Gohan, good. Uh, Int Broly, I think, is still very powerful. So those are solid, solid featured units. But then when you get to AGL 13, he's fine for androids, but he's not like that good, right? Like there's nothing really about him that really stands out. And then the uh, Int Future Gohan, um, I like him, but when you look at him compared to like some of the more recent units, his damage is quite lacking. His defense, uh, good, especially with the damage reduction. So can't really complain about that. A good unit right there. And then the Fizz uh, Future Gohan, he is not great at the moment, but he will be getting Extremes the Awakening within the next like month or two. So with the Extremes the Awakening, he actually becomes extremely powerful. So yeah, I guess like the banner is not that bad. It's just going to be upsetting to see potentially an AGL Kid Gohan instead of STR Super Vegeta. So with that in mind, assuming that this is Gohan, um... I feel like this banner is like a 6.5 out of 10, you know, like maybe a slightly below average Double Confess banner for today's standards. Still not terrible, still not as bad as like a legendary summon banner by any means, but it could be better. It could be better. If they like swap out maybe AGL 13 for somebody else, the issue is it's an Android themed banner, right? So like. 13 makes sense, but if they swapped him out for like one of the more recent Dokkan Fest releases, then that would obviously boost the value of this banner by quite a bit. So that is the uh, 17 and 18 banner, and now let's talk about the units themselves. So starting with the 17 and 18, leader skill is Worldwide Chaos or Future Saga, E plus 3, HP, Attack and Defense plus 100. And 70%. So these 170% across the board uh, leader skills are becoming more and more normal, which is awesome. And let's take a look at the Worldwide Chaos category, actually, which is the uh, new category that the androids are bringing over. And the description on the Dokkan Wiki is consists of characters who's brought chaos and destruction on a global scale. Now, this is one of those categories that are a little bit uh, vague, I guess, in terms of like who's included and who's not, you know, like compared to Super Saiyan 3 or Super Saiyan 2, where it's obvious who should be in the category. This one is a little bit up to interpretation. So uh, taking a look at the units here, we got the one leader, which is the 17 and 18. And then for the LRs, we have a couple of cells. We have a couple of Rosés or Goku Blacks. Uh, we got Boo Tanks. Um, actually, a lot of free-to-play LRs, now that I'm looking at it. We got the uh, Cell who's free-to-play, uh, this Goku Black is free-to-play, he's free-to-play, he's free-to-play. So a good amount of free-to-play options here. And then moving on to the TURs. Um, this category basically consists of uh, androids, so 17, 18, and Cell, as well as some Boos. Uh, some Rosés, Slash Goku Blacks, and Zamasu's, and that is kind of the make- Oh, Demon King Piccolo as well. So that's kind of the makeup of this category. And there aren't that many options. It's not the smallest category we've ever seen, but it's also far from the biggest. Um, so yeah, I would say like, it's not a unit that's necessarily worth summoning for just for the new category like some units the new categories they bring in are so good that it's kind of justified to you know summon just for the leader skill but this is not one of those units um obviously they also lead future saga which is a very solid category so maybe this one combined with future saga um you can definitely build a very good team but i mean i don't really feel like you need this worldwide chaos category uh, lead at the moment. So if you have like another future saga leader, then you can definitely uh, Do without these guys as a leader. So yeah, that's the worldwide chaos category and moving on to their super attack 
It raises attack and defense for one turn and causes immense damage and seals a super attack. And then passive is attack plus 170% and defense plus 180%. Randomly changes key spheres of a certain type, tech excluded, to tech key spheres, plus an additional attack and defense plus 35% per tech key sphere obtained, or plus an additional attack plus 18% and defense plus 17% per key sphere obtained. Tech key spheres excluded. Plus an additional attack plus 70% with 7 or more key spheres obtained, and an additional defense plus 80% with 8 or more key spheres obtained. Plus an additional key plus 1 per rainbow key sphere obtained, launches an additional super attack when HP is 35% or less when attacking, nullifies key blast super attacks directed at the character for the duration of that turn if HP is 35% or more when receiving an attack. So this unit has to be uh, top 5 or top 3 maybe for longest passives in the entire game. I mean this is just ridiculous and uh, it's a lot to take in but if you break it down into its different parts then it makes a lot more sense, right? So they start with attack and defense plus, uh, well attack plus 170%, defense plus 180%, so that's already very good. And then they're an orb changer changing a certain type of key sphere to tech key spheres and then if you give them tech key spheres they're getting attack and defense plus 35 percent per key sphere obtained this is on top of their already base buff of 170 slash 180 attack and defense so i mean that's crazy that, that, that is really crazy that is so much attack and defense for a nuking passive when they already have a massive base boost. And then, if you get regular key spheres, or rather non tech type key spheres, then they're getting attack plus 18% and defense plus 17%, which is obviously um, much more reasonable, <laughs> I would say, but still really good. And then, uh, on top of that, if you get seven key spheres, then they get attack plus 70%, you know, in addition to the uh, nuking buff right here. And then, defense plus 80% with 8 or more key spheres obtained. And since they are an orb changer, it makes it much easier to get uh, key spheres consistently since they're making their own tech key spheres, right? And then on top of that, they're getting uh, key plus 1 per rainbow key sphere obtained, so it's going to be really easy for them to get their super attack off. And then uh, this part right here is not going to be something you see a lot, you know, the additional super attack when HP is 35% or less. Um, that's going to be a very situational thing, you know, only if you're like very close to death. And in those situations, a lot of times, you want to just heal up, right? So uh, you might not be seeing this a lot, but it could save you in very close runs where like you're out of items and uh, maybe the enemy is almost dead and you just need that additional super attack. This could definitely come in very clutch. And then this last part here is great. Nullifies key blast super attacks directed at the character the duration of that turn if HP is 35% or more when receiving an attack. So as long as you're over 35% HP, then they can't be hurt by key blast super attacks. So that's awesome. That's like at least, I don't know what the percentage is, but it's got to be like at least 40 to 50% of these super attacks out there. So like half the time, basically, you don't have to worry about taking a super on this unit. So that's great. And uh, yeah, just an amazing passive. I mean, the boosts are just mind boggling, <laughs> I gotta say, especially with the tech key spheres. And uh, yeah, as I said before, they're an amazing unit. Um, just super, super powerful and uh, great in essentially all events in the game. You know, they're not like good for only short events or only good for long events. Um, they'll be fine in any event in the game. So that is the passive and their active skill is Hellish Game which delays a single targeted enemy's attack for one turn and the uh, condition is can be activated when facing only one enemy whose HP is 35% or more or when facing three or more enemies once only. You can essentially get a free Ghost Usher, right? You delay the targeted enemy's attack for one turn so essentially it is a Ghost Usher effect. Kind of like the uh, AGL PyCon in a way and it is extremely useful and will save your life in uh, certain situations in certain runs 
and uh, also the activation condition is not bad at all. Now moving on to the links, we have Organic Upgrade, Android Assault, Twin Terrors, Brutal Beatdown, Nightmare, Dismal Future, and Fierce Battle. And the categories are Future Saga, Androids, uh, Joint Forces, Siblings Bond, Android Slash Cell Saga, and Worldwide Chaos. So that is everything you need to know about the Tech 17 and 18. They are amazing. Now before we go, let's uh, pop over to the Int uh, Jero in 19, which is the side unit. Their leader skill is Android Category Key plus 3, HP Attack and Defense plus 100, 20% Super Attack, raises Attack and Defense for one turn and causes Supreme Damage and recovers 10% HP. And their passive is Attack plus 200%, Defense plus 190%, plus an additional Attack and Defense plus 39%, and disables enemy's guard when performing a Super Attack. Androids Category Allies Key plus 3, Attack and Defense plus 40% for Seize Enemy Super Attack, when HP is 39% or less, and then absorbs key blast super attacks directed at the character and recovers 39% of the damage absorbed as HP. So this is a uh, amazing side unit, guys. I mean, the support, first of all, for androids is fantastic. Key plus three, attack and defense plus 40%, I love that. And then they also get a pretty significant attack and defense boost they can foresee enemy super attacks under 39% HP, which is obviously situational, but this is literally one of my favorite um, abilities in the entire game because it's so just useful for harder events. And then this part right here too, for key blast super attacks, not only are they not taking damage from them, they're also healing you for 39% of the damage they would have taken. So in that sense, you know, this part of their passive is actually better than the Dokkan Fest 17 and 18 who can nullify key blast super attacks, but these guys will both nullify and also recover HP. So yeah, uh, just, I mean, they're great. This unit is great. And also 10% healing on the super attack too. So just a bunch of healing happening here if you're getting supered and if you're also launching multiple supers. In fact, for this unit, I would probably recommend additional over crit just for the, you know, additional healing for the uh, additional supers, but obviously that's up to you. And their links are Android Assault, Energy Absorption, RR Army, Nightmare, Brutal Beatdown, Fear and Faith, and Fierce Battle. And categories are Androids, Joint Forces, Android Slash Cell Saga, Target Goku, and Power Absorption. So there you go, guys. That is the Jero and 19. We talked about the 17 and 18. They're both fantastic units. Obviously, the 17 and 18 are better, but the 19 and Jero are nothing to scoff at, that's for sure. And uh, we also went over the banner, which uh, is not the best, in my opinion. So, yeah, at this point, uh, I would hope that you guys have enough information to decide for yourselves whether or not you would want to summon, you wouldn't want to spend stones on this banner. But if you want my recommendation, then, uh, I mean, this one's kind of tough, honestly, because the units are great. The androids are awesome, but the banner is not my favorite, you know? Like, it's not the best Dokkan Fest banner we've seen, mainly because of the Super Vegeta uh, substitution. If Super Vegeta was there, this would be a pretty easy recommendation like I would just say summon man because we got the androids and the uh, Super Vegeta two of the undoubtedly best Dokkan Fest units in the entire game but since we only have the androids as like the one hype unit I guess the one headliner um I would give it a conservative summon <laughs> recommendation which means that I think most people should still summon just because of how good the androids and also the side unit androids are, right? But I wouldn't do more than a couple of multis, maybe three or four. Test your luck a bit, see how it goes. If you don't end up getting them, then it is what it is, but I would save most of your stones for future banners, like the dual Dokkan Fest between the uh, Kid Buu and uh, Super Saiyan 3 Goku, like those two are amazing. And I'm assuming that a good amount of people, after seeing the 7th anniversary units, 
are probably planning to save all their stones from now until the 7th anniversary on Global, which is not something that I can blame anybody for because uh, they're easily the best units in the game right now. Like, easily, no question. And the banners, the banners they come on are, I mean, the best banners we've ever seen. Seven Dokkan Fest LRs per banner, 14. No Confest LRs featured between the two banners. It doesn't really get better than that. And if you guys want to save all your stones from now until the anniversary, it's not a bad idea at all. But if you don't plan to do that, if you still want to summon here and there, then this is a banner that if you want the androids, you could still justify summoning on. But once again, don't spend more than a couple of multis at most because, uh, the value on the banner is really not that great. So um, there you go, guys. That is today's pass or pull video. Hopefully it helped you guys in deciding what to do um, when the banner drops in less than 12 hours. And uh, as always, if you guys liked the video, then make sure to like the damn video. Sub to the channel if you're new. Hit that notification bell so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And... Yeah, as always, until next time, have an awesome, awesome day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.